In many ways, this is a terrible place to end the course. Because while it follows directly from the Gram-Schmidt process we just covered, there's a lot of ties, it's a useful application to, of it, we don't really have the time to explain why this is so important. This factorization that we're going to talk about is useful for numerical analysis. It lets you compute things that otherwise would be very difficult in a very efficient manner. But we don't have the time to go into the details there. But that being said, it is easy to do once you understand the Gram-Schmidt process. So what it says is that if we have a matrix, and it doesn't have to be a square matrix. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. But it does have to have linearly independent columns. If we've got such a matrix, then A can be factored as A is Q times R. Q is also a matrix the same size as A, but the columns are an orthonormal basis for the column space of A. And I missed a letter. R is an N by N upper triangular invertible matrix with positive entries on the diagonal. Like I said, the reasons why this kind of factorization we're not going to go into. Let's talk about how it works because it really it does just follow straight from what we already did. In the last video, we found out that if we started with the span of these three vectors, the Gram-Schmidt process found an orthogonal basis that I've got below. In terms of this QR factorization, we're going to say that A is the matrix that has these things as the columns. This, well, it's not quite the Q because these are orthogonal vectors, but Q has orthonormal columns. Well, so all I have to do is divide these things by their magnitude. And that's kind of nice in that each one of these things has the same magnitude, square root of 12. So my Q is negative 1 over the square root of 12, 3 over the square root of 12, 1 over square root of 12, 1 over square root of 12, and already this is starting to look ugly. I could go ahead and type them all out this way. But because it's so nice and that all of these things have the same magnitude, I'm just going to write it as 1 over square root of 12 times the negative 1, 3, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 3, negative 1. Okay, great. I've got my Q, but that's only half of it. I need my R as well. Well, let's think about this. We have that A is equal to Q times R. And the columns of Q are orthogonal. In fact, more than orthogonal, they're orthonormal. When you dot one of these columns with itself, you get 1. When you dot it with something else, you get 0. Well, that means, when I've got that, that Q transpose times Q is the identity. So if I multiply both sides here by Q transpose, Q transpose times Q is my identity. So Q transpose times A has to equal R. Okay. So, how does this work? My Q, 
was 1 over root 12 times negative 1, 3, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 3, negative 1. So, Q transpose is 1 over root 12, and we flop the, the rows and the columns. So, if I take Q transpose times A, it's that times my matrix negative And then this whole thing is just a matrix multiplication. Again, I'm just going to keep that 1 over root 12 to the outside. I've got a 3 by 4 times a 4 by 3. I'm getting a 3 by 3. 1 plus 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 1. Now, it's worth noting here, let's just go down the column rather than across the row. These other ones have to be zeros. A couple of ways. One, that's just what the thing says, that R is an upper triangular matrix, but it follows because this is perpendicular orthogonal to that vector. That's the way we set it up. This is also orthogonal to that vector. Okay. Top middle here, I've got negative 6 minus 24 it's negative 30 minus 2 minus 4 is negative 36. When I take this middle one times that, I get 18 minus 8 is 10, minus 2 is 8, plus 4 is 12. If I take the top times the right, negative 6, plus 9 is 3, plus 6 is 9, minus 3 is 6. Middle times this, we get 18 plus 3 is 21, plus 6 is 27, plus 3 is 30. When I take this times this, negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9, plus 18 is 9, plus 3 is 12. And there we go. This is my R matrix. I won't check it out, but a couple of things. If we take Q times R, we should get A. It's important to keep track of these things. We'll end up with a 1 over root 12 times another 1 over root 12 is a 1 12th times the middle entries. But you should get this A matrix. Again, this is an incredibly important factorization. It allows you to do so much if you go on and study further things in linear algebra, numerical analysis, further things involving matrices.